me hand you over to uh, Jay Agris for this first session in our Green Hall Room, all about copyright and online learning in a time of crisis. Right, so are you going to have our slides up or do I need to do something here? I can share your slides for you. Um, yeah. Not a problem. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so we've got our title slide up. Jane, should yeah. we get started? Let's get going. Let's get okay. It's not legal advice, but they both have to suffice because it's copyright, 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 copyright. All right. Yeah, we, we have a theme tune, don't we? <laughs> we do, yes. Hi there, everybody. Uh, for those who don't know us, um, I'm Jane Becker. I'm a senior lecturer in educational development at City University. And uh, I'm Chris Morrison. I'm copyright licensing and policy manager at the University of Kent. Um, so we've been we've been kind of obsessed with copyright literacy for a while. So for quite we, a long we, time, yes. We, we've yes. got yeah. So um, we're going to talk about the, the the webinars we've been doing. But yes, yeah, so that's our theme tune, copyright waffle. So I've got the waffle T-shirt on, copyright waffle. We have a podcast, don't we? Yeah, and, we uh, do. You've got one I've of our T-shirts on today. I've got our copyright periodic uh, table of exceptions um, on today. So my copyright waffle T-shirts on the line. So <laughs> as it I was is. last week, but um, yeah, we run a website, copyrightliteracy.org, and we have been finding ways to um, empower people, I guess, through um, understanding copyright. We don't think it should be a barrier to uh, online learning. Um, and that's one of our sort of big um, things, really, that we've been really trying to tackle that sort of issue that copyrights is seen as something that's a problem and an annoyance. So we're really looking forward to telling you what we've been up to. And um, we're going to be joined by a illustrious panel today, aren't we, Chris? So. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll introduce the, the panel uh, in, in a bit. So what we um, what we're going to be talking about today, uh, primarily focused on the webinars, weekly webinars that have been hosted by Association for Learning Technology um, that we started back in March. So this is a link to um, the archive of all the webinar recordings. So if you want to go back and the things we're going to be talking about, if you want to go into the detail on, on, on any of these things, um, that's there um, for you to, to look at another time. Um, but we generally start with this when, we, when we've been doing these webinars. So we've got a question, haven't we, Jane, to start off with? We have, yeah. So I don't know if Martin can line up um, our poll. Um, so the question we want to sort of ask you, we've been um, running these webinars um, now that it's going to be our 20th webinar, our next one coming up. So um, have you attended or watched um, the recordings of any of our webinars? We'd like to find out um, from people who are here in the room today. Talking to Martin, we're saying there's, there's definitely a little bit of overlap, but we've um, been uh, aware that, that, that perhaps um, we've got two different communities that it's a great opportunity to bring together. So. Um, yeah, if you can fill in the poll, um, is that available for people? If you can click on the poll. Yep, so we're getting responses in. Okay, okay. Just give everyone a, a, a couple of seconds and then let's see how we're doing. Because I think that will be helpful. I think from some of the names it would have been, uh, it will be a couple of people, but I think it is a different audience today. I think that's... Pretty much the all in, so I'll just show the responses. Hopefully, you can see those as well, Jean. Yeah, okay, okay. So, we've got one of our biggest fans here uh, that said it was the highlight of their week, but yeah, mo most people um, haven't. A couple of people have watched one or two, so that's really helpful. That was that you've was got a whole you've got a whole archive, a treasure trove to look forward to. Um, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, do have a look at some of the stuff we've been talking about, but we're going to give you a brief um, overview about it. So um, where we want to go, really, I think, is, is to sort of just quickly kind of think a bit about copyright and online learning. Um, some of you might not have been thinking about it a lot. I've been thinking about it for well more than 10 years. So copyright and e-learning, a guide for practitioners, um, that uh, first edition of the book came out in 2010. 
Um, and um, Chris and I worked together on the second edition of the book um, that came out in 2016. So we've been kind of thinking about these issues for quite a long time. And I think one of the things that we're um, just aware of is, is the kind of, you know, this rapid shift to online learning and, and what impact that that's had on, on the number of questions that are coming up about copyright and whether it's kind of changed anything. So, so one of the things we looked at in, in that second edition of the book, we, were, we did some research into levels of copyright literacy. And this is our definition. So uh, acquiring and demonstrating the appropriate knowledge, skills and behaviours to enable the ethical and creation and use of copyright material. So it's not just about knowing lots about copyright law. Uh, and, and knowing lots about how uh, how the legislation is written, uh, it's it's linked. You know, clearly, there is an element of that understanding the law, but it's it's linked to the idea of information literacy, digital literacy, or the whole range of literacies. Um, and this is something to understand how this actually manifests in people's practice is really what um, really it, it gets me in. Uh, Jane kind of passionate about this this topic. Yeah, I think so because I think people have a, a sense that oh well it's the law and there's right and wrong answers and actually um, that that isn't the case that isn't for people who understand you know a bit about how copyright law works which we'll say a little bit about today it you know there there is there's a lot of uncertainty and there's a lot of uh, grey areas. So the first thing um, that we did um, in March, um, when it became apparent um, that a lot of things were going to go online, was to think, well, we'll, we'll write a blog post. We, we already had our website. So we wrote this post really to sort of try and remind people of um, what they could do with regard to copyright. So this isn't going to be a problem. You know, there's lots of resources that you've got available. Think about open educational resources as well. Um, but also um, to, to think a bit about what, what you're allowed to do under the law. So, Chris, yeah. do you want to tell us a bit about um, some of the things you talked about in that post? Yeah, so if you want to use copyright protected material in your teaching, which almost definitely you will, um, there are licenses that are available from the copyright owners. So they may be primary e-resource licenses. So things that a, a uh, educational institution's library would subscribe to, databases, journals, ebooks. Um, but there are also uh, collective licenses like the CLA license, the Copyright Licensing Agency, um, that represent uh, publishers and authors um, and visual artists um, in books and journals. Um, and they allow copying up to a certain amount. Um, there are times when you can get permission directly from the copyright holder if it's if it's practical and feasible. Um, ERA um, license and the box of broadcast service um, cover film and TV. But then we, we were pointing out that there's uh, Creative Commons, as as Jane says, open educational resources. Um, so we also wanted to point out that copyright exceptions and here's a range of them so these icons come from copyright the card game which is a game that jane and i have produced um that we use when we do copyright training it is actually a card you've got the cards there haven't you jane so you can i do i do them up. I them right in front of me here. but what, what we do in, in our sessions is try to point out these are defenses in the law that allow you to make use of copyright um, material without the rights holders permission without contacting them or without having a license and mostly this is when the use is regarded as being fair so what is fair um, there is no definition of fair dealing in the legislation itself fair dealing is the concept that we have in the UK so we pointed out really that you've got those two things you've got licenses that allow you to use something with permission and then there are copyright exceptions which allow you to use material um, without express permission of the rights holder yeah and um, i can see we've already had a, a question about like whether the, the the laws actually fit for sort of online teaching and i think one of the things that's just worth mentioning is that the law was updated in 2014 it was meant to be making it fit for teaching in the digital age um so it's a it's a really interesting question but it is also something perhaps we'll pick up in our panel at the uh, the second part of this session because uh, many of these new copyright exceptions or amended exceptions haven't actually been tested in law. So, you know, this this could be the opportunity to do that, I think. Um, and I see Emily sharing some really useful stuff as well about some of the guidance that she's been writing about the interpretation of copyright exceptions. So what I would like to do, um, it's over to me for some interactivity again. Um, so um, 
what we'd like you to have a go i like um a metaphor so um copyright at the time of crisis is like can you have a go um at uh, completing the answer try not to write anything too offensive and rude but what do you what do you think um we're going to give a prize for the best answer what's what's the prize going to be chris we think we're given that we are all um shut away from each other and nobody's playing card games we're going to spend the lucky winner for the best answer a set of our uh, copyright cards i think it's an ideal thing to have at a time when if you're if you're in your your bubble with your family um then what better than to play a card game that allows you to explore the uh, risk-based elements of, of copyright in in education and, so, so and has anyone got any suggestions do you want to pop anything in the chat copyright at a time of crisis is like anything anything you can think of what is it like it's like it's like a... railings on the edge of a cliff says <laughs> okay Ooh, got i went to i went i went to the yeah i went for a walk on the dover cliffs uh, a few months back with my son and there were no railings and i always had a heart attack big elephant in the room Mm. Pan's labyrinth. Oh, curtailing. <laughs> a sudden revelation. <laughs> something. <laughs> Try Trying to ne nectar re re release feral cats. Someone looking over your shoulders. Yeah. Oh, neuter and release feral cats, not nectar them. There we are. Neuter. Oh, yes. Right. Yes. Okay. yes. Right. I was thinking what attracting the cats with nectar. <laughs> Manna from heaven. Okay. It's like seventeenth stick that academics still hit with. Oh, I like that one. I do That's like a good that one. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to have to have a bit of a think and come up with what, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> uh, vegetarian running a meat factory. Crikey. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think we can. We've got. We've got. That's it. Then it's time to stop your submissions. We will do a very careful analysis of these. Uh, metaphors and we will um we will oh. choose our favorite there's a, there's i the, the I, adele's <laughs> gone for a really bad pun and that's kind of caught my eye but we could we could come back to that Go on. river in africa it denial <laughs> <laughs> right the things that came up in in our webinar so we, we we've run nearly 20 of these now we'll come to the kind of stats later but what we found through the discussion is there is a lot of complexity in it and once you start yeah. getting into the law uh, you cannot help but look at a number of different provisions in the law which overlap and maybe contradict each other i'm unsure and even you know emily hudson who is joining us in our panel later has, has put a link to her paper where you know the actual issue is very clearly laid out uh, but you will see that there, there is complexity in it this yeah. is definitely the case um there's a lot of fear uh, in within the the sector within the community that they don't want to be infringing don't want to be seen to be encouraging it um you know what what could happen this is something that can I say something there as well? Because I think it's it, not fear in the, yeah, it's not fear in the kind of traditional sense in a way. It's not like people are cowering in fear. Sometimes what it's to do with is that the people are actually just trying to kind of fly a little bit under the radar, aren't they? Yeah. We talked yeah. about this and to kind of just ignore the issue and think I'm probably doing something wrong, but I'm not not probably not going to get found out. So so fear is you know it, it kind of it, I think it manifests its way in, in itself in different ways. So we it, have got absolutely. people that are nervous and really fearful but we've got other people who are a little bit like just kind of you know in denial <laughs> so. and and the, the, so the final point about copyright ownership and academic freedom i think linking back to the point about you know this is the 17th stick academics uh, feel hit with that they pointed out it's it, you know, there are questions about the intellectual ownership of uh scholarship and about um, whether this is restrictive, the way that in institutional policies to try to address copyright law, do they overly restrict teachers and students in what they could do, um, which links to a whole load of other very emotive um, and contentious subjects. So th those all kind of come into the mix, uh, yeah. which I think make, make it, you know, it, it's not a straightforward thing to, to work through not. to copyright Absolutely for many not. people. No, um, no. So what was the metaphor that we, 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 we've got our metaphor, haven't we? Well, it's not ours, we it have. was provided we've to got, us. We've got, we've got a metaphor. So um, when we're thinking about copyright, 
it um it was actually something someone said we were doing we did um quite a few pieces of research about people's experiences of copyright and somebody said that it was like being the receiver and thrower of a hot potato um and uh you didn't actually you did actually did you it's did a, it's a real potato it yeah. i must um, I, but it, it's it not, is it's not hot. It's not hot. It's it was from the fridge. I did I did scrape the eyes off it though. I thought if it had eyes on it, it would look less. Um, but anyway, that was that was taken by my son. So copyright <laughs> Sam Morrison. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it, but this has come up actually. Um, this idea of copyright as the hot potato, hasn't it? Um, and um, people whose responsibility is it? Who's who's going to make the decision? Um, mm. Mm. Um, and nobody kind of wants to be left holding the hot potato i think they kind of generally seem to want to throw it on to somebody else as quickly as possible and we've, we've seen that quite a bit in discussions we've had particularly in relation to film and audio visual content and whether you can stream and record that in virtual classrooms or through other ways so um yeah but what are we going to try and do chris well initially because i love an extended metaphor were we trying to tame the hot potato we had a bit of an internal discussion within our within our group um and our community uh and i, I know chris jones from reading isn't on the call but he did suggest that maybe what we were trying to do is slice open the hot potato put butter and cheese on it to make risk-based copyright decisions more palatable um so uh, thank right. you for that. Uh, that that's clearly a paper that must be written um, it is yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, th that's 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 kind of ridiculous extended metaphor let's have some stats yeah so the the webinar started on the uh, 20th of march um and um so we've got our 20th webinar coming up next um ne we're giving ourselves this friday off so next friday mm. um we do them 11 o'clock usually pretty much um 11 till 12 um and we've done 19 webinars so we're averaging about 100 participants um, who are joining us um, every week. Um, we, we, our maximum, so we've had 136, so that's the kind of top number that we, we had. Um, we, we have quite, I think we have quite an important announcement related to the CLA's higher education license on that day. So that was why that event was, um, was popular. Um, Chris and I also manage um, a closed discussion list, um, which we, um, I think quite a lot of members of that discussion list that's called List Copy Seek um, have been joining our webinars. They're often the, the copyright specialist in the institution. Um, and we've seen a growth in um, people wanting to join our mailing list. We're going to say a bit about it because it's a closed mailing list. It's only open uh, to sort of members of the, uh, the sort of education community, cultural heritage sort of people can come in. So essentially it's a closed list in that rights holders can't can't join that list. Um, and one of the things we've done as well is um, we've been inviting guests along to our webinar. So I think it would have been probably a little bit dull if it had just been the two of us, however entertaining we are with our jingles and theme tunes and things. Um, so we've had guests joining us um, every week, really, um, from all sorts of organisations. Um, yeah, so, I don't know if you want to say anything, Chris, particularly about that. But uh... um, I think that you know, some of these things will, will are unfolding dynamic situation. What's happening with this license, that license we'll talk about in, in a moment. And, and others were um, things that came from the community said, oh, we'd like to know more about, for example, Creative Commons. Um, mm. And we got mm. from Creative Commons to come and talk to us. So I'd say some of those are uh, some of them may be of their time. Other ones, I think, would be actually really useful if people wanted to go back and see. So, uh, you know, Bridget's session on Creative Commons, particularly Kyle Courtney from um, Harvard University as well, an absolutely a, a brilliant presentation that he did um, mm. about US copyright and fair use, which is not what we have in the UK, uh, and also controlled digital lending, which is a way in which US libraries are making uh, books, digitized books available Again, without the permission of the copyright holder, which has been quite controversial, but he lays it out very clearly. And also, if you go back to that episode there, you also have Emily Hudson um, presenting on that, I think, as well. So you've got some, yeah, there, there's some good stuff to, to go back to if, you know, even if it's, the other stuff is kind of of its time. So, Chris, I mean, it's all been some pretty serious stuff, really, hasn't it? Pretty heavy going. Um, it's pretty heavy going. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> So this is a what these are some of the photos that we've shared uh, at various points in um, part of this process of putting these webinars together was trying to 
make us feel like we were part of the community and doing yeah. stuff wasn't it? yeah 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 so and, and, what have we got some I, highlights i i don't know i don't know where i don't know where to go with with some of the embarrassing photos that have been yeah, there's, some, there's some lockdown hair stuff yeah so. Yeah, yeah. Me, me at twenty. That's you in the middle there, isn't it? That's, that's yeah. Quite a funny photo. There's the incident on the top left where I stood on a stool, and we don't yeah. entirely remember why I was doing that, but during the Skype call. Yeah. So I, I think it's probably best if we we move yeah. on. Actually. Well, there's another one that's equally self-indulgent actually coming up next. So this is the fact that so Jane, this was you wanted to put this slide in. Over I to did. you. I did. I, I mean, I, I actually think um, that, that putting a bit of music and um, fun into the sessions has been really um, a quite an important part of it. And, uh, you know, you've you've been known to uh, play a little bit of guitar on some of the sessions, haven't you? We had some singing as well, things like that as well. We've had and, some um, happy birthdays. We've definitely had yeah. some happy birthdays when, when it's been birthday time. So that's been quite nice. And, and I think that that is all part of what we try to do with copyright literacy as well. So, um, you know, it's 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 been it hasn't all been um, copyright. Now, let's let's kind of kind of go on to a sort of slightly more serious, I guess, issue, which is um, this idea of, of holding these webinars. Uh, the idea we sort of said open dot by default. So we actually wanted to try and shift and do something different here when we were running these sessions, didn't we? Yes, we did. I mean, we, we again, we, as Jane says, we have a closed list. We're both Jane and I are members of, of uh, the committee that negotiates uh, copyright licenses on behalf of the higher education sector. And those negotiations um, are done with a small team directly with those rights holder organisations. We we talk to the sector to find out what things they want and what they need. But there is you know, there's a clear separation between the negotiation discussions and the broader community conversations that we have. Um, mm. But in this situation, there were quite a lot of things that we needed to look at and reconsider. And we wanted to get the rights holder representatives to come in and be part of that conversation. So I think we it, it's come in, we're kind of open because mm. in fact, we had some closed sessions as well. I mean, there was definitely mm. a need to have those um, discussions where people could feel free to talk about whatever they you know what their concerns were what they were doing at the same time as as inviting everyone in to have a constructive discussion because often copyright particularly when we're looking at um, its use in or application in education um, and in cultural heritage there's there's tensions between yeah. user and rights holder communities that often mean they, they get into their camps and throw shots at each other across the bowels saying you know so and so's you know, behavior and activity is, is is not acceptable and we wanted to um not gloss over those but but to to try to come up with something constructive given the situation absolutely yeah absolutely so yeah um it, it, it you know i think time will tell whether that's um, proved to be um successful as well but um yeah. yeah one of the i mean i think one of the other things that we've tried to do and uh i i think you know it, trying to keep yourself up to date in an area like copyright can sometimes feel um like quite overwhelming and, and quite stressful i think like it does you know in this, this sort of whole pandemic brought this out with people feeling like they might have missed something what's the latest that's happening with technology and how should they be doing things but um being able to to sort of um share copyright news is something that's been really important in our session isn't it Chris? so yes it is indeed here we copyright go news, copyright 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 news, so uh, yeah, we we we've been um, we've been busy writing stuff. This was something um, that we wrote. Not just um, jingles. Not just jingles. No, um, on the uh, the wonky uh, uh, blog. So will the pandemic force universities to address the challenge of copyright? Um, that that was a post um, that we wrote um, in June, um, and and you know really to sort of say that actually at a sort of uh, institutional level. Um, copyright is sort of been the thing that people haven't wanted to talk about, but will this um, mean it, it might be? And I kind of linked to that in the in the piece. We talked quite a lot um, about some of the kind of problems there are with getting access to content, um, specifically 
Obviously, we've discussed these on our webinars, um, ebooks, um, and the licensing models that are available um, for for some titles that have been particularly problematic. Um, and we've been we've been trying to liaise with DISC Collections um, over that, helping to collect some data about um, some of the problems in that area, haven't we, Chris? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and that is related to so. The, the, you know, I mentioned we are on the, the group that, that negotiates the, the, the collective licenses um, and the situation with the CLA license uh, was a major topic of conversation. So we're, we're very pleased to have James Bennett um, from CLA on our panel. So, um, and I think other CLA colleagues are, are on the call as well. Um, and this situation, if, if people aren't aware of it, was um, that CLA's members agreed to um, increase the amount that could be copied under the license. Uh, at, at the outset of the pandemic and then this um, expired at the end of June um, and then we've been you know the, the webinars have been a key aspect of talking through the issues um, and our CLA's membership have agreed to reinstate um, uh, a copying of up to 20 percent and we're sort of working through the details of how how that is going to work and getting some FAQs to work because there are there are some relationships between the CLA license and how ebook licenses work and, and mm. commercial availability, uh, which mm. we don't I don't think need to go into in, in huge detail here, but it's it's an, it's part of an ongoing conversation. But it's been quite an important thread, hasn't it? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And for so people thinking as as well about open education as well, it it certainly is. Um, sort of highlighting um, some of the issues when our, our textbooks are written um, by academics in universities and many of them um, are obviously then uh, you know signed over to publishers and so we're we're we're, we're kind of hoping that we'll have bigger conversations about this rather than just trying to fix this uh, during this sort of crisis situation the other topic that has really come up in the webinars um, a lot is um, in relation to film, hasn't it, and audiovisual works, Chris? Yeah, so we've uh, been talking about how do we provide um, audiovisual resources to students who are not able to come into uh, lecture theatres and cinemas and how's that going to work. So we've had a number of closed sessions as well as more open discussions on this. Um, so we're, we're working through those and um, also uh, refer here to um, Emily Hudson's paper. So Emily uh, wrote a paper on access to film and has come up with a set of guidelines um, with, with the legal analysis that sits behind it. And, and those have very much um, come about because of the conversations that we've been hosting um, and uh, having the, a place for the sector to talk through these things and compare notes on what they're doing. So we're, that's still a work in progress because institutions have to balance up those risks of what they're going to do, how comfortable they feel at, at doing various um, you know, sort of digitization activities. Um, and I see there's, is there a link to that paper? Emily, if you want to stick the link into your paper, that would mm. be useful here. Yeah. Um, that I would be that would be really cool. the end as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and other uh, so other topics that we also uh, have covered um, over the, the weeks. So copyright education. How do we spread the word? How do we increase levels of copyright literacy at this time? What are people doing? How are they moving to remote teaching? Creative Commons licensing, as I mentioned, accessibility. We had a whole session looking at digital accessibility. Um, mm. or web accessibility regulations and the, the, the tension between that and copyright law. So you want to copy and format shift, but copyright law says you can't. What do you actually do? Uh, printed music, well, there's a new license here. I've mentioned the US um, fair use presentation from um, Kyle. Um, uh, and I'll skip the, the Kent thing because I'm going to come on to that briefly next. But we also, we did have an end of term copyright quiz, didn't we, at, at one we point? We did, which, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a lot of fun, um, and I think actually there was um, a, a various huge debate around uh, some aspects of copyright history that we apparently got wrong. So yeah, uh, anyway, uh, we'll, we'll um, move over to that. So I did have the opportunity uh, to to use the webinars to launch a strategy we developed at Kent. So this um, I will I will not talk about this at length. Um, let you have a look at it, but this is where we have tried to address some of these issues at an institutional level to say we are going to uh, have uh, informed critical conversations about how we, we work through copyright questions, questions about risk and questions about open versus proprietary. So th that was really uh, a good opportunity um, to, to talk to the community about that. Mm, 
Mm, yeah. So we have a question for the floor. We do, and and I think this is to be sort of thinking about, um, and perhaps we'll pick this up then in the panel. So how has copyright impacted on you um, or your institution during the pandemic? We would like to hear um, more about this. I mean, we're aware that um, we have talked very much to the copyright community, who obviously are the most um, uh, you know impacted by this. Um, we did um, some really super scientific research um, with a Twitter poll in the last couple of days, um, and we um, we sort of asked uh, people um, how how it was um, impacting on them broadly. So we were assuming that we weren't just talking to our kind of little bubble here; we were talking beyond that. Um, and um, it was interesting to see that um, you know it's 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 come out that sort of 59% are saying a lot or a fair bit. Um, so, you know, it, it, I think it, in certain areas, copyrights had a big impact, particularly, um, we've heard, and we've heard quite a bit about film and things like that. Um, for other people, it, it may be and it may be a discipline related thing as well. They've, they've just carried on. They've been able to use all the materials. Things are available and it's not had a big impact. Um, but we would like to hear um, from you as well and, and to sort of pick up on that. Um, but we wanted to really just before we go over to our panel, just briefly, both of us um, say a few things um, about um, reflecting on um, the experiences since uh, March and what it means for us. Um, and it is kind of possibly a bit soon to be doing really deep, um, thoughtful reflections about this, I think. Um, but I think it has it certainly made me think um, how much um, you know copyright is actually um, a, a wider issue, um, particularly to do with, you know, how content's made available to students um, and what what kind of um, models are made, it's made available under, whether we should be pushing towards things like um, open textbooks, as Melissa said. Um, but I also think that, that for us, one of the things that I, I think we've tried to do is we were aware that people were um, panicking, we're sort of trying to find information. And one of the roles I think that Chris and I have tried to play is to sort of curate content. So people could tune into our webinars and know that in an hour they would kind of get up to speed on what the latest was, um, you know, with regard to uh, things like the DLA license and, and what was happening with, with uh, other things in the community. Um, and so, so you know, there's been a sense, I think, that we've all wanted to try to be really helpful at this time and potentially overwhelming um, our academic colleagues. One of the things I think we try to do is, is sort of sift through that and, and help people a little bit. Um, so we'd be interested to know whether, whether um, that is something that's successful. Um, Chris, do you want to say anything about any uh, of yeah, my my overriding reflection is in some ways this is th these webinars and going through this process um, and having a regular conversation within the community is something i've wanted to do for a very long time so i've wanted to feel like we can move forward with this idea discussion about risk um, and taking a sort of mature attitude and, and moving away from copyright as just being seen as a compliance issue um, so I, in some ways it's allowed us to do more than I, I thought. So it's you know got us out of a, a mindset where well, unless we can actually get together physically in the same space, we can't move forward with these things. Um, but I think also um, I, I found it challenging to, it, sometimes it feels a bit chaotic that you've got you know lots of voices coming through and that's 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 well it yeah. could be but all you know I, I quite like to kind of come up with solutions and i think what you find when you're hosting a community discussion is actually you can't solve every problem you're, you're there hosting a discussion and trying to mm. do what you can and move collectively forward and you don't quite know exactly where you're going so um i think it is uh yeah, it, it, it's been challenging but rewarding, uh, and I think it is to really give a final reflection because, as we said, we, we're still going, and and maybe this um, terrible cliche alert, maybe this is part of the new normal um, of what we're going to end up doing, not just within our community but generally speaking. Yeah, um, but what, so, what what we're clear about is making it sustainable, and I think um, that's something that Alt has played such an important role um, in. Um, helping us um, create this kind of, you know, much more active community. So to go from a closed discussion list to 
um, these weekly webinars and to kind of bring people together in this way. Um, um, we want to kind of um, carry that on. So we'll, we'll come back to this at the end, I think, but we, um, we, we have um, put out um, a call for people who are involved in, in joining what at the moment we're calling the, the Cool Gang, which is the best acronym we could come up with for copyright and online learning. Um, if you're interested, we've, we've had a lot of expressions of interest um, and we're going to be holding a meeting in the next week or so um, just for the sort of founding members. So uh, do get in touch with us um, and Martin will put the, the link to the blog post where you can find out more about that. But I think we should go over to bring our panel in now, don't you, Chris? I, think we I absolutely enough. agree. That's enough of us waffling yeah. on. So are we going to um, uh, introduce each of our panel members or are we going to uh, let them come on and introduce themselves in the order that they're in? The, on the I, th I think we should we should introduce each one, I think, briefly. So we just we'll, we'll say hello to them all. So we have um, James Bennett, who is the head of rights and licensing at the Copyright Licensing Agency. So James has been a regular contributor to the uh, to the webinars and we've been putting him through his paces in having to speak to the whole of the sector and ask, answering their questions. So really good to have him on here. Um, Martin Hawksey uh, at Alt has been uh, an absolute stalwart who's um, made sure that the, everything's been working. We've tried some experiments with things like closed captioning that's been interesting. So um, really good to have Martin on who's going to talk from, from the perspective of, of hosting these and what it means to the learning technology community. Um, Lisa Bohr, um, who is the, the, the copyright person at the University of Creative Arts, also a member of the, the Copyright Negotiation Advisory Committee that I mentioned and negotiates the licenses, but has been a, um, a, a regular participant in here. So we're really great to have Lisa's input into this um, as somebody sort of working through these issues uh, within an institution. And we, we found that arts-based institutions have had particular issues because of the use of, of things that aren't necessarily in digital format in the first place. Um, and Dr. Emily Hudson, who is um, an intellectual property um, expert academic at King's College London, um, who has again become a regular um, and as you've seen from the links that she's been putting into the the chat, has been writing quite a lot of very helpful, very useful um, um, academic papers and guidance around this area. So um, thank you very much to everybody um, for for joining us today. Can we check that you're all your your mics are all working? Hi, James. 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 Yes. Yes. Hi there. Yes. You here, James? Present. Yeah. Hawksy. Hello. Yes, Lisa. Yeah, present. Excellent. Excellent. And Emily. I am here. Oh, brilliant! Okay. They're all here. We can hear them all. So, so we're Jane, gonna, we're gonna give, are we going to give each of our speakers just? Um, we're going to go. I think to James first, and, and uh, we we sort of primes them with a couple of questions um, about their thoughts of of being involved. Um, in the webinars, but just a couple of minutes each. Um, James, if, you, if you'd like to sort of start us off with anything um, that, uh, you know, that sort of struck you um, a, a, a based on, you know, you, you have been um, not at every webinar, but but many of them, haven't you? And and how, how are you sort of feeling uh, about that as a new way of communicating with the community? How do you feel sometimes when we tell you we're having a closed session, you can't come in, what's going on in that room? So James, thoughts from you. Thanks, um, thanks Jane and Chris. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, I, I've joined um, as, as many as I could with, while I was allowed in, but, uh, but I, you know, I do appreciate that, that yeah, some of, the, some of them are closed sessions. Um, and yeah, so, so yeah, you did, you did send me some, some questions to sort of uh, help structure a, um, some of observations on, on the, the webinars. Um, I mean, yeah, generally, I think, I think that they've been really Great. Um, you know, I, I'm coming from an un, unusual position because I'm representing PLA as a as a supplier of services to the community, but I'm also someone who's really interested in the interplay of exceptions and licensing. So uh, a lot of the discussions, even those that are weren't particularly relevant to what what I do, have been really interesting, um, and really helped me to understand the issues um, facing institutions. Um, how you know how important they are, how important different things are, which we which have come to the fore because of of, of the crisis, and um, 
really, um, you know, uh, it, it, it is, yeah, it's like a whole new channel of um, engagement with, with some of our kind of most engaged already um, licensed users and people who know a huge amount about, about copyright. So that's been really good. Um, in terms of the challenges that I've faced uh, around the webinar, it, 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 it's, it's actually quite um, overwhelming when you get a lot of comments and questions coming in the sidebar. But it is yeah. also really good to have. Uh, it was it was really good to have Jane, Jane and Chris kind of filter them and say, you know, so I could feel like I didn't need to read the comments and questions because I was going to be asked them anyway. Um, mm. And it is really handy to have that kind of instant feedback. Um, so that was kind of um, challenging. And I think actually thinking about the the webinar series itself in terms of well, what what challenges did I identify that were being faced? Um, I think something that was really struck me was the, the blurring of primary and secondary licensing, um, which I've known about for a long time, but this has kind of really brought it into focus and shown some examples of that. Um, and um, it showed me really that a lot of the challenges that were faced by institutions were really around the primary access to the digital content rather than secondary use of the content, which is our remit at CLA. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it did feel that there was a feeling the CLA could solve all kinds of problems with ebooks and pricing that we couldn't really, it's not really our area and there is a wide, these are wider issues that, that need to be addressed and that's why it's good that the webinar series has had contributions from lots of other people including these collections as well because um, that's really important. Um, yes, yeah, I think it's a really good point, actually, James, because I think um, despite um, Chris and I thinking everyone understood how things like CLA license worked, we talked a bit about this, that, you know, you have to have bought the, 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 the material you want to copy under a CLA license. And, it, you know, it isn't meant to substitute for a primary sale. And that sort of seems to be something that, you know, is, is, is kind of a little bit mixed up, I think, sometimes in some of the discussions, isn't it? Particularly, as you say, around um, people wanting to get access to ebook content um, and thinking, oh, well, I could use the CLA license because this would be a much cheaper way of doing it than me having to buy that title. So, yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, shall we go on to Martin? Um, and we'll, we'll come back to our, our panel members um, if they want to say more. Um, Martin, um, would you like to share any sort of reflections? So you um, confidently sort of probably rather blasé said, oh, yes, of course, I'll host a webinar for you, Jane and Chris, on the 20th of March. And little did you know, you'd be um, <laughs> entering into a, a strange world. <laughs> well, <now> <laughs> Um, well, um, the, the, the backstory that uh, Jane and Chris don't actually know is um, I, I put my hand up for that first webinar uh, on Friday and um, I've been um, supporting Jane and Chris and panelists and attendees to that on the following Fridays. I don't work for Alt on Fridays, um, so I've, I've been enjoying them so much that I've been coming in uh, on a day I'm, I'm not technically working for Alt. Alt in, Kind enough, um, or uh, insisting that I take the time off <laughs> uh, in other parts of the week. So, but I've, for me, I think it's it's really interesting as a learning technologist. Um, often, I think when we look at issues of content, we immediately feel that anything that's got a copyright license on it isn't usable. And I think what these sessions have actually done for uh, the people who are from the old community attending these sessions is it's really opened our eyes in terms of what you can do with copyrighted material uh, legally. So, you know, the, the various exceptions, um, you know, the, you know, the, the paper that Emily's um, produced and shared is a great example of, you know, just being able to understand more of what's going on, um, so that when you do have conversations with the copyright experts within your institution. You, you're aware of what is feasible, so you can perhaps negotiate a different answer than you would, would originally have got. But also, I feel that as um, we uh, alt is, you know, hopefully bringing in some technologists into these conversations as well. It's an opportunity for uh, those people to share some of the solutions in terms of, you know, how you can technically uh, rights manage material, uh, you know, put it um, in places where you are legally able or 
appropriately able to share that. Um, and also, I think for Alt, we have the um, certified membership for Alt. And for those people who are interested in becoming a certified member, uh, one of the core areas is engagement with um, uh, legal aspects. And so I think for people interested in CMOL, these sessions are wonderful uh, professional development in terms of uh, understanding the copyright legislation, its limits, and also its opportunities as well. Um, mm. So um, I, look, I look forward to spending more of my Fridays uh, copyright webinars. I feel, I feel very, I feel very honoured. I really yeah, do. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. We didn't know that at all. So that's that's really great to hear. Um, Lisa, can we go over to you, Lisa? So you can um, join in, tuning in to the webinars as a participant, mainly. I think you did speak at one of our webinars. Um, but um, what what sort of reflections have you got from from being involved in this? And, and perhaps also you might want to say something to your from an arts institution about um, copyright and the impact it might have had on the teaching that you do there. Yeah, massively. I mean, the first thing I think to say is how responsive the webinars were. You, you know, you, we, we had these webinars quite early on in the in the pandemic, and that was really, really useful and supportive. It, just to kind of say, well, these are the what were the problems that we're experiencing. Um, you know, how are we going to overcome these? What 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 ways can we find to to support the academic staff, to support the students and kind of finding solutions collectively? And when joining the webinars, you know, you realize how met, how what a big group we are. Um, and from that, we can channel that as like one collective voice and this is what needs to change and this is what we need to maybe um act on and you kind of it gives you a little bit more confidence when you you, you start to realize that actually that there's a lot of us um you know um out there all all trying to overcome some of the same some of the same things and then with regards to supporting teaching and particularly as an arts institution you know my university is an incredibly risk of birth university they 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 don't like risk but we have film studies courses we've got to deliver um, one of our biggest courses is film production um, they show entire films throughout the year so you know it's not the case that we can just now close those those closes you know that we can't now stop teaching on those courses um so that what i found over the lockdown i was in some very um some meetings with some very senior leadership team members who are looking to to, to me about well, well what are we what are we going to do <laughs> and mm -hmm. so that's where the the support of the community and the paper that emily wrote and all of that really um, helps to say, well, look, this is the research that's been done. This is, um, you know, we, we're going to have to start to think about risk. We're going to have to start to make those decisions. But at least I could come from a very informed position and that confidence, with the exceptions particularly, um, into some of those really senior, <laughs> some of those senior meetings I suddenly got found myself in. Um, yeah. So it's been very good from, from from that perspective, and we can find a way to move forward. We can find a way to to make these courses happen online. That's that's great. That's great to hear. And yeah, I, I definitely echo the the idea of the community coming together to sort of develop, you know, so that we we feel more confident in our decision making. Emily, um, last but by no means least, um, you've been a really important person. Um, joining us for these um, webinars. You've also uh, demonstrated a very good sense of humour at times when sometimes you, you find things that Chris and I do make you want to cringe and run away, but share some of your experiences. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I attend these sessions both in my research capacity um, because my role involves um, research into copyright law and I do a lot of work with the um, glam sector um, and also then as an academic who is um, teaching um, at the moment and thinking about copyright law and I guess also too um, I've done some work advising um, people within um, my institution King's College London um, so I've helped develop the film studies 
um, protocols that, that we'll be using. So I think one of the great things about the webinar has been the opportunity to engage with um, stakeholders for whom my research is, is relevant. Um, I've thrown in the, the, the chat a few of my publications, um, including my, my book. And um, what I think is really good is to take something that I think most of you will not read, um, but actually take out some of the key lessons and ideas and very practical things and then present new outputs which are much more directed towards um, the industry. Um, and I think the webinars have been central to that and helping me get a sense of what people are doing, what people's concerns are, their risk aversion, their decision making processes and, and so forth. So I'd really like to continue with that sort of level of engagement because I consider that this is me giving back to the sector. I mean, I'm employed to do research. I'm not just employed to, to sort of sit around and in a chair and, you know, think profound things. I actually want to do research which which has impact and not just for ref reasons, although that's obviously in the mix. Um, at times too, it's quite interesting to, to, I feel like an insider listening to librarians and learning technologists talk about things, bitch about academics. At times I'm like, I'm an academic and now I sort of, I sort of, to, to hear sort of from the other side about the sorts of um, ways in which dealing with academics can be challenging. It, it's just, you know, it sort of, it, it really makes me think about a lot of issues in terms of copyright management and that you've really got a challenge in decisions being made by people all over the institution and how do you um, how do you manage that process so that whole idea of copyright literacy being quite relevant and 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 what happens when in actual fact it often comes down to individual academics making choices about what what they're going to do um, so I think those are sort of some of the the key things um, for me um, you did ask I'll say one final thing in the, yeah. the prompt was copyright really a barrier to teaching online? Yeah, and I yeah. think one of the things I just say from a personal perspective is for me, it has not been. Now, and I use quite a lot of um, images, sound recordings, audiovisual works in my teaching. Because when we're teaching IP law, we want to show people a lot of content. And I've really, I think I've really thought long and hard about exceptions. I have, um, this, I think that there are very plausible arguments in favour of using um, material in online classes, particularly when they are to a closed group of students via the VLE. So I've been very comfortable um, in making those arguments to myself. Um, and certainly as I, I think I'm on the record as at the, at the webinar, um, um, I am not frightened of being sued because I think <laughs> we've got an excellent case and sometimes Sometimes you need to make new law. So um, I, I stand very confident in my position on things and I'm more than happy to talk with people about the decision making processes I've gone through if that would be of assistance. As I said, some of it is in the written outputs, but I'm very keen to continue that discussion. Thanks, Emily. That, that's brilliant. And I, so we, we do have, uh, we're about four minutes left now, so we, we invite any further questions that we have from, from participants. Uh, it, just let us know if there is anything, but picking up on your point there, Emily, about, um, you know, making new law, and you're referring to um, there being a test case where the arguments would be put before um, a court and a judge would make a decision. I, I guess the thing that's on my mind here um, is, you know, it came up earlier there was a question earlier is copyright law fit for purpose i mean is, is so emily you've already said you didn't think because you think there are provisions in the law that allow you to use your teaching so you haven't seen it as a barrier um maybe um lisa could i ask you do you think from your perspective as a practitioner someone trying to make these decisions in the room do you think there's a problem with copyright law that needs to be um changed through, through reform I think for me, it comes back to the the legal exceptions and having a kind of, um, and that's maybe with this lockdown, that's the first thing I did. We went back, back to the legal exceptions and say, okay, we need to re-examine these alongside what we're trying to do. So with the case, with the film production, and we're trying to replicate what 
what uh, the the they would normally show a film. It's for educational purposes. It's for you know it's for it's part of the course. They're not you know. Um, so you know it's it's about looking at those exceptions and having that confidence. Um, so I would say that um, that no, the, the the copyright law is there, um, and it is about becoming knowledgeable about those exceptions and applying it. But I do think there is that element of risk um, and that, that, that has to go hand in hand. But yeah, I, I kind of think it, it, it is about copyright enables us to do much, much more than I think a lot of people think. Um, yeah. Thanks for that, that Lisa. Uh, I think it, that, so. Lee has pointed out that you know, the thing is to encourage academic colleagues to have the conversation. Um, mm. So I think that it's about building that confidence um, and the collaboration. So going back to what was in in the keynote as well, and what Dave White was talking about, how many of us are collaborating? I think we've seen that. It's it's, it's, a, it's a good point. Uh, James, I wonder if I can go to James and say, from a rights holder perspective, these conversations we've been having. They suggest there needs to be change, to, not necessarily to copyright law itself, but to the way in which we we operate and the way in which you know the, the, the mechanisms that underpin this this thing work. Um, well, I, th I think um, it, it's important to to see that um, the, the 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 paid for textbooks published by by commercial publishers wouldn't have been made if copyright wasn't there and didn't exist in the way it exists. So, so it, it, copyright is the thing that, that encourages the innovation and the creation as well as potentially causing challenges when you want to reuse it in ways that haven't been, been envisaged when the work was published. Um, I think, you know, there were loads of changes made to copyright law in 2014 with the explicit intention of making copyright relevant online teaching in the digital age. So you know it, that's been that's quite recent. Um, uh, I'm sure there are things that could be could be uh, could be looked at, but um, you know my my point is always that that li licensing is should be flexible enough to to accommodate where exceptions don't work, and our licenses definitely work for online teaching. It's, they're built around it, and you know we, we we do our best to be flexible. And hopefully the new extension this year will be helpful to people in the current climate. Thank you, James. We are running out of time, and if we could just very quickly uh, finish um, up, um, Chris and I just wanted to end really with saying that um, you know this has been a great this has been a great panel um, for us. Um, this has just been an opportunity. We like to go out on the uh, uh, touring around and actually talking to people, and uh, we're hoping our journey continues. Chris, some people have noticed your guitars. Are you? Yeah. I think we want to say thank you to the panel. We need to do that, and everyone's going to go to the next session anyway. So we're going to have a very small number of people that might stay around Not for this. Want to say thank you to Emma, thank you to Martin, um, Emily, and to Lisa and to James. <laughs> Uh, for everyone for, for joining us it's been really useful yeah, I've got, I've got lots of links in them and they will be made yeah. available yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye. thank you very much everyone Bye. thank Bye. you but uh, hey are we going to do this anyway because we're yes. well, anyway, I, I, go, go, go. Go, go.